Hello everyone and welcome to our video today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about developing a data analytics strategy for 2021. Uh, specifically, this is going to be geared towards small businesses as well as startups. Uh, our team has been focusing heavily on those uh, for 2020. We'd like to continue uh, kind of doing work with small businesses and startups uh, for 2021. So we hope this will be helpful uh, as far as putting pieces in order for you guys. All right, so for the agenda today, we're going to talk about uh, first, why even invest uh, in data and data analytics, as well as some inspiration from uh, some of the work we've done this year to help you guys understand ways you could see massive ROI. Next, we're going to talk about uh, assessing your data assets, you know, looking at what you actually have, kind of making a plan, and going from there to create a strategy, as well as then the steps to setting up a successful strategy. All right, so why even invest in data analytics or data analytics strategy? It was recently reported that about 20% of earnings in 2020 were attributed to AI based on uh, the companies surveyed, according to McKinsey. Uh, specifically, this was AI, but uh, we are going to talk about a few examples this year where we were able to provide some similar numbers uh, for some of our clients as far as ROI and uh, future earnings. All right, so here's some inspiration from 2020 where we were able to help out small businesses as well as startups to help them both reduce costs uh, as well as increase profits in various ways. First, a very classic method in the first one is just price optimization. We helped a transportation company increase their profits by about 15% uh, purely by helping them better optimize their pricing based on historical and current data uh, so that they were always, you know, charging more when they were in high demand and, you know, making sure that they met a more reasonable price when demand was down. Uh, this in turn essentially led to about 15% increasing in general uh, of their bottom line because they were be able to better uh, meet the market based on demand. Next is fraud detection. So this was basically developing fraud detection for insurance providers. Um, in this case, uh, the company that paid us was able to essentially receive their ROI, um, basically what they paid us within the first quarter uh, that, they, that we released the product. So this was pretty much, you know, uh, it paid for itself within one quarter. And, you know, since then it's been working the same and essentially been paying back uh, every quarter and help, help them reduce the amount of fraud that they were uh, receiving. Uh, next, we're going to talk about service cannibalization. Uh, so this was basically our team was just asked to analyze some data for a company. They were really just curious about general patterns. They, they, they weren't 100% sure what possibly what we would actually find. They actually kind of just gave it to us um, on a very open ended, you know, just take a look at our data kind of project. Uh, after taking uh, a few weeks looking at it, we found that uh, the average number of people per service was reducing over time. Uh, and as we looked into it further, we found that the client in particular had been increasing the numbers of services uh, and thus paying more, right, to have employees manage those services, but not receiving an increased profit. So they didn't really make more money, but they were spending a lot more money. So based off seasonality, we were able to better uh, time those services and provide those services for uh, this client so that they weren't uh, accidentally spending more money um, on these various services just to uh, essentially make less. And then finally, we developed a dashboard for sales where essentially the client uh, was able to use public data to assess a very specific topic uh, for businesses and then take that dashboard and essentially hit the worst performing companies first and, and go to them and say, hey, you know, in this area, our company is not doing great and we have a great service to improve that. Um, and basically through the power of that dashboard, they were able to kind of show that through uh, a few KPIs that we developed. Uh, and thus, uh, essentially, they ended up converting more uh, post uh, providing that dashboard than before when they were just kind of going in a cold call with no real numbers or data about the topic they were trying to sell. All right. So the question becomes, right, like these are some great examples of ways that companies have reduced their costs and increased profits, but how did we get there, right? Like the question becomes, you know, how do you go from nothing to some sort of something? Earlier, we gave the example of the 20% bottom lines being attributed to AI, but it's not like you just are already able to do AI from the get-go uh, or even basic analytics. So we need to develop some form of data analytics strategy uh, where we end up, you know, either it's developing some sort of data warehouse, uh, dashboards, et cetera, that help you take your raw data and make it useful. So in order to do so, we need to figure out where your company is, step one, and where your company wants to go. Um, you know, you, you might have some specific initiatives you're trying to meet. You might have some specific goals, and we can kind of help figure out exactly how to fill in uh, those blanks to get you from, again, point A to point B. 
So let's kind of talk about uh, what you first need to assess. And step one is to kind of assess where you are. Uh, so you start by just looking at first, let's talk about data sources. What kind of data sources does your company have? Do you have uh, third party tools like Salesforce, Asana, Shopify that you're hoping to you know, bring in data uh, and analyze? Do you have some internal applications that you need to analyze? Do you have some uh, databases or you know, like SQL Server, MySQL, et cetera, that uh, manage your applications that you need to pull in? Um, so that's, that's step one. You know, you need to kind of do an inventory of what data you have access to because the data that you have access to is the data you can act on, right? If you don't have data managing your workflows, you're not gonna be able to answer any questions. Next is uh, data storage. So, you know, depending on where you're trying to go, whether it's, you know, again, building a dashboard, building a model, building an algorithm, just doing general analysis, this step will kind of change. Uh, if you're trying to build a more complex system, you might need to develop something like a data warehouse. Uh, or something very similar so that you can constantly be doing analytics. But of course the question becomes, should you even do this? Uh, some companies that we've uh, worked on, uh, some of the pricing optimization tool, for example, uh, we didn't end up building a data warehouse for because we just were able to pull uh, daily snapshots of a very specific small set of data um, and just put that into a light database. And again, we can kind of work with your team and, and help you figure out exactly what you need in this step. Uh, you know, if you're planning to develop a really large suite of tools or uh, analytics, it might be very complex, but if you're just, you just need something small, uh, you know, it can, it can change. Next, uh, we will look at like analytical tools. So do you have any currently? Are you using things like Tableau or Power BI? Um, and if not, you know, do we need to figure out what will work best for you? So let's take a look at some of these possible sources and data storage uh, tools as well as analytical tools, just to give you an idea you know, maybe you've heard some of these names, maybe, uh, you know, you've read an article, so let's look at them. It can kind of help you out, kind of just help you picture on where you might want to go, because um, that's something that always helps, right? Like, uh, understanding what data sources you have, for example, uh, could help you understand that, hey, you can pull data from Workday or Zendesk or QuickBooks or HubSpot or Stripe or Shopify, etc. cetera, um, and you can pull those and then analyze them. Um, if you need a data storage tool like Snowflake, BigQuery, or Redshift, that's great, then we can put that data there. But for all you know, you might not need one of those uh, layers because again, that requires a lot of extra work to develop something like a data warehouse for analytical purposes. It really depends on what type of analysis you require, uh, what kind of work you're looking to get done. Um, again, that's, that's something we need to define uh, as we're looking where you are and where you wanna go. Um, and then as far as analytical tools, you can use anything from, again, Tableau is a very popular uh, dashboarding tool. Uh, a little expensive, so it, you know we, we do try to figure out if a customer is willing to invest that much money into their product. Because again, if you build an entire dashboard in something like Tableau, and and then decide you don't want to pay for it anymore, you're going to lose all the work that you know. If, if our team did it or some other team did it, you're going to lose all that work, and it's going to cost you a lot of money to you know rebuild it in some other maybe freer or cheaper tool. Um, you can also build in something like Power BI or Excel or Looker. Also, some other analytical tools that are not necessarily for data visualization, but more for getting data from point A to point B, but and doing several transformations would be like Stitch or Fivetran. Uh, and we included these in particular because they are a little bit lighter on the technical side in the sense that for smaller companies, uh, doing custom code might not be your best option for getting data from point A to point B. So something like Fivetran or Stitch where they are a little bit lighter and a little more focused on um, non-technical users a little bit, um, not completely. Uh, it might be, it might fit you a little better. Again, there's a whole array of, of tools as well as data sources that your company has access to. Uh, I think the biggest thing here is that a lot of these tools make what used to be limited to large, uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100 companies uh, accessible to everyone. Okay, next we need to figure out what your data analytics goals are. So do you have like specific initiatives? Like as you're looking at 2021, are you looking at very, very specific ideas? Like, are you trying to increase uh, customer satisfaction? Are you trying to reduce churn or increase sales, et cetera? Whatever it might be, it could even be broader. Like I, I like to say, you know, you could just have something as simpler as you're looking to reduce costs. You're looking to increase profits, something that high level where you just need to kind of figure out where, where in your pipeline, where in your workflow can you uh, possibly uh, fix these issues? But you need to have some sort of clear kind of vision and idea of where you're kind of going to go. Uh, because just looking at the, these tools for data's sake, right? Like I, I, I put this last point there. Is if you're just looking at these tools because you, led, you read about Tableau, you read about some data warehousing tool, you read about some sort of AI or machine learning model that 
save some company a ton of money, but you don't have a plan and specifically geared towards, again, a specific initiative, uh, we, we generally don't recommend that you use or, or do anything with data unless you kind of have a general idea of where you want to go. Uh, again, you don't need to know all the answers, but you need to kind of have that idea that, that some sort of initiative that's going to drive either our team or some other consulting team. Again, it, it, they just need to have some sort of idea of where you want to go. Um, they can figure out all the details between point A to point B, but you kind of have to know where B is, at least uh, general vicinity. All right, so once you've kind of set up a ton of maybe goals or, or projects that you want to take on, um, step one is generally to prioritize. Uh, a lot of companies that we worked with this year had tons of data, even though they were small, uh, and they had tons of ideas, and we kind of had to, you know, figure out, okay, well, which areas do we start with? How are we going to prioritize them? And, and, and you got you to gotta set up where you're going to win. And we're going to talk more about that here in a second. After you kind of prioritize, you need to set up and create a plan. Uh, you know, just lay out with some general timeline, general milestones. It doesn't have to be, you know, hard and concrete, but some general timeline for when specific things will be done. Uh, so that way you as a owner can kind of feel like things are moving forward. Uh, this is good for both you as well as, you know, your team that you're working with, because it, it just helps everyone ensure that you're on the same page and it helps them feel like there's success and small, small victories along the way. And that brings us to the next point, which is just have some clear checkpoints with meetings. You know, it could be once every week or two weeks, you know, look over what's getting done from a high level. Don't, you know, I wouldn't, don't spend too much time in the details. Look from a high level and be like, yes, this is where we want to go. No, this isn't. It, it's very easy for especially tech projects in general um, to get one degree off. And that one degree ends up taking the entire project off on a very um, unnecessary tangent. And then, you know, uh, that doesn't make anyone happy. So it's important to kind of just make sure that you're, you know, going back, looking at the data, or looking at the dashboard or looking at whatever it is that's getting built and that you understand that yes it meets your needs or no it doesn't and once you have a, a you know a, your first few victories where you put out a dashboard or you've put out a model or you've done an analysis uh, don't stop this process you know reprioritize as you need you know because every three to six months you might see new products that you need to do more than the ones that you were doing prior don't stop and restart and stop and restart projects but you know once projects are kind of finished up reassess what projects are next make sure you're doing the most valuable project uh, next every time and then keep communicating keep assessing what's getting done and make sure that you know whatever work's getting done is the work that you think is getting done all right so let's go over prioritize uh, this is honestly something super simple you can do whether you're in data science or really any field having this really simple chart I think helps out in terms of just understanding what should you do and what you shouldn't do just kind of saying you know if something is low impact and high effort you'll see that that column is ignore uh, which, yeah, like if something doesn't provide a lot of value, but it will have a lot of work required, you probably don't want to do that. Regardless of maybe how interesting it could sound, it might not bring you value. Unless it's like 100% necessary, you should probably ignore it. Similarly, low impact, low effort. Um, you don't necessarily want to ignore them, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to get so in the weeds with doing tasks that are really small that you don't get the bigger gold tasks done. Uh, which brings us to the bottom two options, which is like put these at the top of your list, which is high impact and low effort, right? Like those are really easy to do and they're going to give you quick wins. You want to get those done as quickly as possible because they give you, from one perspective, they just give you energy. Whereas you complete projects and succeed, it feels good and you kind of keep going. At the same time, for high effort and high impact projects, you don't want to completely ignore these. Uh, because they are high effort, that means they are likely to take a long time. So if they need to get done, you need to make sure that you're assessing that and saying, okay, you know, we know this bit of work is going to take three to six months. We better start on it, you know, April because we need it done by, um, you know, November or something, Where, wherever it fits in the plan. It's not ignore, right? Because there is high impact, but it might not be the first thing you want to do just because, again, it's going to be a lot of effort, especially if it's your first uh, data project. It's going to take a lot of time and, and you need to kind of get used to working with your team and you want to make sure you have some quick victories first before you uh, start really investing large amounts of both money and time uh, into a project uh, with people maybe that you've never worked with or you're unsure of, of the quality of their work. Next, uh, create a plan for your data analytics strategy. Generally, we just try to propose some sort of timeline with uh, specific key, key dates and milestones, um, but some sort of plan or strategy because this is going to help everyone be more transparent. Creating this layer of transparency where people kind of know when things should be done also helps when things get stuck, right? Because you look, uh, especially technical projects get stuck all the time. It's not abnormal but it, it helps people understand where things are and where they're going versus, you know, constantly trying to uh, reassess and, and there's not clear communication when something goes wrong on how long it's going to take to fix and dealing with all those problems that uh, 
arise from there. And then from there, just have some clear checkpoints besides just milestones, right? Like we, we are looking to have um, specific dates with specific milestones done. But on top of that, you just want to meet, you know, once a week or maybe once every two weeks, just to, just to see, just to see what the work looks like. You know, don't, if you're a business owner, I don't recommend, you know, pushing too much into the details too often. Generally what can end up happening is one meetings that you might have set for 30 minutes. Then if you start drilling into every detail, uh, will take an hour or two, uh, as well as you can end up adding more scope to the project, which just slows it down. Um, I generally like to say, get your first version out regardless of if, it, if it's exactly what you want. If it's going the general way that you want, get that first version out uh, and then you can kind of adapt from there and, and, and adjust. Again, if it's small changes, it's not, it's not, it might not be a big deal. And again, you can just keep repeating this, right? Like scope out some work that will get done for the next two weeks, allow those employees or consultants to do that work, review the work, can, can confirm or you know, add, some, add some notes if, if things don't seem 100%. And then just keep, you know, scope out the next two weeks, let them do it. Let the, you know, review that work, reconfirm, just go about the next two weeks. And, and that way it's just kind of a clear process. All right, so now what? How will you approach your day strategy in 2021? So thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. And we hope to uh, see you back for more videos. So we're also putting together some videos on what uh, technical tools you should be using in your data analytics environment. We'll go through some of those like Fivetran or Tableau, uh, Stitch, et cetera. We're gonna kind of go through some of the benefits, pros and cons and just talk about uh, a lot of different tools. So even if you don't you know, uh, go with a consultation for us, that's fine. That will hopefully just help you get a good understanding of what exists out there in the technical environment, especially for small businesses and startups. So thanks so much. Uh, please do like and subscribe. We're trying to really create videos to help uh, small and medium businesses uh, improve their data analytics strategy. And uh, we really appreciate it. So thank you and goodbye.